Hey guys, it's Girl Got Game and welcome to another Gander video. Today, I am taking a look at a demo for Twice Reborn, a vampire visual novel by First Step Cinematics. This is their very first visual novel that they're making and it's currently in Kickstarter right now. And yeah, I saw it floating around the interwebs and thought, I'm kind of on a vampire kick right now, so more vampires, please. <laughs> I love the artwork for this, so that drew me in right away. The story is... In Twice Reborn, Mark Delaware, a teaching assistant, becomes a newly turned vampire in a community forced to hide in plain sight. His mentor, Mickelson, has trusted Mark to become the Enforcer, a feared arbiter who keeps the quarreling vampiric houses following the code. When arson kills key vampires in the community, it's up to Mark to either embrace his blood or to find a way to, somehow, regain his humanity. So in this game, there's three core paths you can choose, either to side with humanity, vampires reject authority, or become a vampire enforcer, plus a hidden path to become a vampire hunter as well. So yeah, I thought, hey, let's take a look, see what it's all about. Let's begin. Ooh. Bats. I like the bats. Oh, this is so pretty. The graded papers weighed down Mark's shoulder as he adjusted his shoulder strap. He descended downstairs straight toward Professor Mickelson's office, hoping that he wasn't too late. Okay, so this is written in third person. The professor was one of those unconventional people who worked at all hours. He wasn't a workaholic, but he was a night owl, or a night bat. Mark had no clue where he got the energy. Mark found the professor in his cramped office, frowning over a stack of essays. Essays. Blech. With his red pen in one hand, he loomed over his student's work. The professor rubbed eyes as he concentrated. Mark was impressed by his late-night dedication. Between committees, research, student organizations, and grading, he was a busy faculty member. Mark wondered what it would be like to work in academia. It was tempting to have power, to discuss things as an equal among experts, to be addressed as doctor or professor, influence minds, maybe even change the world with a shocking discovery. The job was almost perfect, except for grading finals. The professor grimaced as he turned a page. He leaned away from a student's paper and waved it in the air. Do my students even realize they're taking ancient civilizations? Listen to this one. Julius Caesar is a great man because he invented the Caesar salad. Oh no. <laughs> Off to a good start. Well, it's better than last year's Greeks or college students in fraternities and sororities. Oh cool, even the main character is voice acted. I like that very much. Now the voice acting is optional. You can turn that off in the settings if you want to, but I believe all of the cast is voice acted, which is really nice. Always the optimist. Keep that trait. Professor Mickelson took the graded papers from Mark's hands. You're freezing. He's dead, Jim. Really? I'm comfortable. Blink. You're finished with these papers. Thanks. You've been a huge help this semester. It's difficult to find a quiet moment to grade around here. I like that there was a, a, a moment they had about, you're freezing, and then they just like stopped and blinked at each other, and like, anyway, <laughs> moving on. I saw the tail end of the amphitheater performance outside. Your twin friends were there. I don't think I've told you, but they'd taken one of my classes before. I don't know if anyone's told you, but you have some very pronounced fangs, Professor. It's unfortunate. They were with some unsavory company tonight. I advise you to stay away. Your future depends on it. Bad company is bad for the mind. I think I know who you're talking about. They've been hanging out with Kyle and Nate since the start of the semester. Neither are doing well. Kyle and Nate are always exhausted coming home late. I think they're getting into fights. They come home with cuts and bruises. Hmm. I'll be careful. I'll be careful, Professor. 
Very well. Did you see the performance? Yes. This semester's theme is immortality. That's why the acting troupe chose Dorian Gray. They'll perform Frankenstein next month. Quite the selection. Um, I'm just curious. Yeah, here we go. This is a page I saw. So, Status and Lions, Enforcer, House of Skull, Humanity. So you got the three, and then there's a hidden one of a vampire hunter. Status Relationship, Jody, Twins, Johnny, and Ricky. And then you have a Bloodlust meter as well. As well as some other hidden stats that are not on this page, but you can keep tabs on this to see where you are at, which is pretty cool. The professor stilled. Immortality? That's an interesting choice. Do you think immortal characters are portrayed mostly as good or as evil in literary sources? Just curious. Hmm. Most stories always have them as the bad guys. Yeah, I was gonna say. Ah, I agree. What's your opinion? If immortal beings such as vampires existed, do you think they would be evil? So subtle. If they're real, I think it'd be wrong to judge them. But what if they kill those they bite? Very few vampires are murderers. At least in today's fiction. <laughs> Mark thought Nate would be shocked to hear that Professor Mickelson read vampi vampire books. Sometimes Mickelson talked about his hobby. Usually when Professor Mickelson spoke about immortality or vampire lore, he was always animated. He liked the mystery of how these stories appeared across many societies. Today's fiction? I thought you liked the classics. I try to keep up with the times. Glancing at the doctor's tweed jacket and bow tie, Mark doubted his statement. Hey, bow ties are cool. If you were given the opportunity to be immortal, like the vampires, would you be one? Drinking blood would be disgusting. Also, I'd miss food too much. If I found a girl I love to share my life, then maybe. Sure, who wouldn't want to live forever? I'd rather hunt the bad ones. Interesting. I mean, drinking blood would be disgusting. But vampires have always been my favorite <laughs> of the whole supernatural creatures. So I'm going to go with this one. Sure. Who wouldn't want to live forever? What about drinking blood? Abandoning humanity and, and not being able to stand sunlight? Who'd want to live as a monster? Okay, the drinking blood, I have a problem with. But I'm an introvert. <laughs> I, I, don't, I won't miss people that much. And I'm a night owl as well, so sunlight, eh. <laughs> You know, two for three ain't bad. People are too fragile. Just look at what happened to my mom. It was cancer, wasn't it? Mark nodded. I'd want to have all the time in the world to explore. To actually experience the ages. The side effects would be a small price for studying centuries. Don't you also think so, Professor? As they stood in his dark office, Mickelson didn't answer. And then thunder crashed. Not quite. <laughs> Two on the nose, maybe. That was a giant cross. Them birds be flying. <laughs> St. George's University campus mourned Kendra, the murdered college student. Gray-robed monks held an outdoor Catholic mass. It was standing room only. Her dorm mates huddled crying against each other near the altar. Mourners tried to comfort them, but they continued bawling. <laughs> Ripping away her young life made no sense. Mark stared at the procession and hoped silently that no one else would be a victim. The stifling sun beat down the solemn crowd. Squeezing through the throngs of students, Mark reached the shaded sidewalk. He took in a deep breath, glad to be out of the crowds and away from the direct heat. Some of those around him wore angry expressions. Others crossed their arms. Some were simply stunned. Many had puffy stares or listless eyes. St. George's was a small campus, and Kendra's death affected every person. The tragedy rocked the campus, and few students felt safe. 
Female students now never left without at least two other friends beside them. Some students started carrying concealed weapons. The local store sold out of mace. Two voices caught Mark's attention. The professor, looking pale and fatigued, argued with Brother Luke. <laughs> Mark distrusts religious men. Man, you have a lot of options for this. Um, I wonder if he knows he's a vampire? Possibly. I'm curious. Usually, Mickelson was polite with Mark's French professor, so it shocked Mark to see how the two were bitterly bickering. The professor kept his distance from the monk. Blessing himself with the sign of the cross, Brother Luke walked stiffly away from Mickelson as the professor frowned. <laughs> Slides off screen. A small band started to play a farewell for Kendra. Professor Mickelson joined Mark under the covered sidewalk. He looked exhausted. It's a shame for such a young woman to die. There's no respect. What's going on with Brother Luke? We are all concerned with what's going on around campus. Uh, I wonder if he saw, like, bite marks and was like, Yo, do you know what's going on? His eyes dragged slightly to the left as he spoke. The sweet scent of sunscreen struck Mark's nose. Mickelson must have bathed in it. Mark dispassionately watched the mass. Mark was not a religious person, but he understood the campus's need to say farewell to Kendra. As he watched Brother Luke celebrating the mass with the other monks, he wondered why he and the professor fought. Eventually, something about the sacrament caught his attention. Curious by the steps in the service, Mark noticed the priest hold up something small and round. The monks declared it the actual body of Jesus the Christ. Mark didn't understand, but apparently they believed it to be so, and they handled it with reverence. He glanced at Mickelson. Mickelson turned away from the sight. Mark was about to whisper to him when the monks proceeded to step among the crowd, blessing the students with sprinkles of holy water. <laughs> flick, flick. As they passed, a few present proceeded to relevantly make the sign of the cross. Not re probably reverently make the sign of the cross, beginning by raising their hands to their forehead, touching their upper stomach, and ending the movement by touching both shoulders. Shake, shake, shake. The monks uh, walked, sprinkling water left then right. Some of it landed on Mark and those beneath the shaded sidewalk. <laughs> He's like, ah, it burns! The professor slumped and leaned against the brick wall. Are you all right? Professor Mickelson looked ill. His breathing quickened, his skin ashen. Um... Hmm. Just a little weak. I think I did too much today and yesterday. Class has been cancelled, so you need not come. Mickelson straightened himself and grimaced. Mark frowned at his paint expression. I'll be okay. Will I see you at the Society of Arts tomorrow? Um, sure. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll hang out with my obvious uh, vampire professor <laughs> hidden in plain sight. How are we doing on this? Ooh, we're on the Enforcer route so far. There was a missed call on his cell phone. Hiya! Mark frowned. The number was one he recognized, but never used. Hesitating, he pressed redial. A cheery, feminine voice answered the line. Oh, Mark! It's been a long time. How's school? Fine. Your father told me you're not coming home. I don't see why you don't. It's not like I'm going to bite. I think I might be interrupting your honeymoon period. I don't understand what's wrong with you two. Always so serious. If only you smiled some more. You're too 
handsome to be frowning all of the time. <laughs> Dots. He wants to know what you want for your graduation. What I want? Yes, what you want. We are not able to make it. We are going to Paris. Why couldn't he have told me that? Well, you know your father. It's difficult for him too, you know. You remind him too much of the past. He's trying to move on in his life. To stop mourning. Is this your stepmom? There was too much sadness that day. Mark wanted to forget it all. She was only making it worse. So if he ignores me, he can forget about her. Yes, Mark had some of his mother's traits, but he also inherited some of his father's. It seemed so unfair. That was the excuse his father gave every time he avoided Mark. Mark closed his eyes and tried his best to imagine his mother while she was still healthy. It was hard. For most of his teenage years, she fought to survive. Her thin hands used to stroke his cheeks and his hair. In those frail moments, his mother used to softly say how proud she was of him, how she would always love him, and that he and his father will be there for each other. However, his father's actions turned his mother's last promise into a lie. He can send me cash instead. Or how about buying me a car? Does he think money makes me happy? Is that what you want to hear? <laughs> he wouldn't care anyways. Tell him to love me enough to call me himself when you both return home. Ouch. Mark closed the phone. Something wet hit his cheeks. Lifting his hand, he realized he was crying. Aw oh man, what awful timing. A knock rapped on his door. He quickly wiped his face. It was the twins. Man, you guys... I would never have guessed you were twins aside from your matching necklaces. Nate and I wanted to know if you want to study at the library. Since when are you interested in studying? Sorry, we heard through the walls. Fight with your stepmom again? Huh. Mark looked embarrassed. Yeah, you know what. Friends. Sounds like a good idea. Let's hang out, bros. Stretching, Mark leaned back in the library's cushy couches. Kyle and Nate flopped their heads back against where they sat. Scribbled notes and stacked reference books were scattered on the table between them. Kyle and Nate had scratched and copied study hints next to their thin original class notes. Their notes were a mess. They'd only written a few words per slide and hadn't bothered to write down any of their class lectures. Mark wondered how they passed if this was their normal work. Reviewing the materials was good practice. The twins haven't asked for a study group in months. This was a positive change. Maybe those two had taken his advice and would finish the year seriously. If anything, this was the distraction Mark needed. Yay for friends. Two hours of studying later and Mark's brain started to feel like mush. Mark felt groggy and yawned. The twins looked at each other. You're tired, right? Go on ahead of us. We'll be fine. We stay up all night. Mark left the library and started tracing back the sidewalks. Brrr. Slowly slides off screen. It was dark and quiet around the campus. No one was around. A soft breeze blew past Mark. He rubbed his arms, trying to smooth the goosebumps that rose. He turned the corner around the gym. A voice from the shadows whispered next to his ear. Found you. Oh, hi. Oh, hello, scary boy. A heavy weight tackled him against the gym wall. His judo reflex condition made him flip his attacker. Before he could make a step to run, the green-haired punk leapt, back ha backhanding him. A stinging, throbbing pain laced through his cheek. A fist came towards him. Mark saw it coming, but couldn't dodge it. Man, this music's a bop, though. Ow. With a loud smack, Mark was hit with an uppercut. He slumped as his shirt collar was grabbed. His attacker lift him, lifted him from the ground. Mark kicked out his feet, but the punk ignored him. Ah! 
Oh, no. Mark couldn't move, his teeth sunk in his neck. That sounded like biting into an apple. Aye. As he hollered for help, a clammy hand covered his mouth. Mark quickly lost his strength. His green mohawk attacker gave him a bloody grin. That will keep you quiet. What did I do? Drop that student. Professor! The punk swung around towards Mickelson. The skull charm around his neck chimed with the movement. He hissed in frustration. Oh, he has the skull charm too. I didn't even notice that. Hmm. I can't see it here. Shock blocked Mickelson's view of his victim. What are you going to do? You're not the boss of me. <laughs> I could stab you with this wooden stake. Mickelson pulled out a stake from his inside jacket pocket and took measured steps toward Mark's attacker. I've been keeping an eye on you skulls. Don't break the code. Use only willing donors. Keep the secret safe. Mark fought to remain conscious. Panting and keeping his hand on his neck wound, he had to think of something, anything. He fought to stay awake. Skulls? Where had he seen that necklace before? Was this creep a vampire wannabe? He hoped the professor found help soon. I haven't done anything wrong, Enforcer. I was thirsty. You're killing him. What do you care? It's just an animal. He threw Mark to the ground and flicked open a switchblade. Mark wanted to call out to his mentor, warn him, but Mark held back. If he called out, it could fatally distract the professor. Mark shivered. He could die. They both could die. That kind of attitude is what gets you killed! Mickelson rushed at the vampire. The green-haired vampire stepped back as the stake swiped the front of his shirt. They grappled. Mickelson kicked out. The attacker slammed into the wall before sliding partway. He pushed himself off the wall, launching at Mickelson. Mickelson sidestepped the incoming punch. The fanged attacker stumbled before turning around. Thunk. A sickening crack and a squish. Mickelson staked the man's chest. Horror crossed the attacker's face as he realized what happened. I enforce the code! That's why I care. Eesh. He pulled the stake out and the vampire fell face down with a muffled thud. Mark gasped shallow breaths. Mickelson raced to him. Horror and recognition crossed his face. Tearing his sleeve, he used its material to staunch the blood flowing from Mark's neck. That son of a bitch. Sorrow fell across Mickelson's features. Mark was proud of the professor. He stopped the campus murderer. Suddenly, Mark's vision faded. He sputtered through shallow breaths. Oh god, I'm gonna die! Mickelson answered with a note of finality in his voice and a confidence Mark did not have. No. You haven't lost all of your blood. You are not going to die today. Ah, oh, that's it! That was the end of the demo. How did I end things? Okay, didn't get any relationship with the twins, but it's so small. All right! Thank you for reading our demo of Twice Reborn by First Step Cinematics. Reading a demo means that this is an early draft and sample of the game. This demo is two chapters in the first half of the story. It is not to be resold. We hope you enjoy it. Please wish, wish list us on Steam and Itch.io. Well, there you go. Just a short little demo to give you an idea of what's going to happen. So there's a bunch of characters, obviously, we haven't met yet. I, uh, you can see some of them here on the main screen, and I saw some of them in the trailer. But yeah, this, uh, this looks really neat. It gives me a lot of, um, Buffy vibes, actually, which is a great thing. I love the art, the music's really good, and the voice acting's really good, too. So, if you guys enjoyed what you saw here today, I hope you will check out the Kickstarter. I will have a link for that down below. It's going until June 7th. And I will also have a link to the demo for you to try out as well down below. 
But that's it for me for today, guys. Thank you for joining me for this fun little adventure. And until next time, I will see you later.